Oh, hey. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, let me finish measuring this little bit of sugar, uh, and then I'll be right back and we'll talk. Okay. Whoop. Oops. Sugar's done. <laughs> and uh, there's walnuts. I'm going to be chopping for the chocolate chip cookies. Uh, it's been about four months that you've been in the kitchen with me. Uh, so welcome to my custom design style. Uh, no, <laughs> it's not. It's same kitchen as the rest of the kitchens in this apartment complex. Uh, nice kitchen. Works well. Uh, but anyhow. Uh, we're going to uh, do uh, painting number 14 from the art storybook. We're going to uh, have a fictitious question. And then we're going to do worksheet to canvas, a little painting maybe. And then end of episode, musical guest uh, for the uh, ending credits. So let's go. So while I'm continuing to make the cookies, I'm also going to get you over to the easel so you can see painting number 14. Uh, if you've been keeping up with the episodes, particularly uh, the one that featured Bob and Bob, uh, this is similar uh, in, in nature in that the uh, it, I had done all the way back in 1997, uh, was it 25 years ago, uh, a small little pen and ink uh, watercolor drawing and when this project came along, uh, this uh, 8x10 grouping of paintings, I decided that I wanted to see if I could transfer it to a canvas and oils. So, with that, to the easel. Thank you, Bob. Uh, this pair of doodles right here is not the original doodle that I used for this drawing that I'm going to be showing you. Uh, that original doodle's long gone uh, before I kept real good records with my sketchbooks, but it's close uh, to the pairing of shapes that I used. So here's the pen and ink watercolor drawing that I did 25 years ago. Uh, very simplified shapes uh, and color. And for the oil painting, this is the full size 8x10 uh, pencil worksheet. And this is the finished painting. Uh, 8x10, oil on canvas, uh, titled The Kiss. I got to test one. They'll do.
Okay, so that was the last tray coming out. I have to wait a few seconds for them to cool down a touch before I put them on the rack. Uh, and then I'll have another one. <laughs> Gotta make sure. <laughs> This particular cookie sheet, they stick a little bit more. I've had this oh, lots of years. So I think the, uh, not as stick free as it used to be. Okay, folks, fictitious letter time. I'll see you over there. Take another cookie. I baked some cookies. I ate a few cookies. They were good cookies. <laughs> so with that, uh, uh, we're going to get to the fictitious letter. I've been sitting here for about three weeks. Uh, this is from Felix Small, 1127 Walnut Court, Better Fill, Colorado. Uh, dear Mr. Howe, I just saw the episode where you were learning drafting in high school, and then you went to work as a draftsman, and then you got your drafting furniture. Uh, question is, uh, did you stay working as a draftsman and stop making art? Yours truly, Felix. Uh, P.S. I drive a truck, so I'm going to wave high from my truck. Or hello. There's Felix on top of the truck, a little unsafe, but I appreciate the hello. The irony of your letter. <laughs> uh, yes, I excelled at drafting in high school. Yes, I got a job after, after school as a draftsman. And, I, and then I was able to obtain some drafting equipment. And then the irony set in. I got drafted. <laughs> so, uh, so with that, we're going to take a little trip down memory lane, a reflection on my history of becoming an artist, and that is right in here, age 19. Let's go. So the first part of my three-year commitment to the uh, United States Army <laughs> was uh, boot camp, basic training, uh, eight weeks. Uh, the Army provided me with a uh, wonderfully free haircut, and uh, had, I, I learned how to shine shoes. <laughs> uh, this is still basic training, uh, slash boot camp. Uh, this is one of our uh, advanced training exercises, uh, standing still while out in the woods while holding a rifle. Uh, and I must have done well. <laughs> they came around about three days later, patted me on the helmet and said, uh, you can go back to the barracks now, son. You did good. <laughs> uh, me, nice and spiffy and clean cut, getting ready to leave my eight weeks of basic training for Georgia, where I'll do 12 weeks of what was called AIT, Advanced Individual Training. My training uh, was Signal Corps. No photos uh, there, so onward. To my next stop, courtesy of my favorite uncle, uh, Uncle Sam. <laughs> what does he have in store for me? <laughs> Here I am, next stop. Vietnam uh, <laughs> wasn't necessarily my first choice of, of places I wanted to visit this time at this point in my life. But regardless, I was with the 199th Light Infantry Brigade, which meant we moved around a bunch. Uh, during my 12 months, my year there, uh, we were in three different locations. First location was seven miles south of Saigon uh, in this old fishnet factory. I think I was trying to get a Rambo pose here. <laughs> so here I am with a little bit of an informal dress code. Uh, not this informal in all parts of the compound, but outside in certain areas, you'd have to understand in Vietnam, the, the heat and humidity uh, is sometimes unbearable. I'm in the glasses. 
If we look a little young there, uh, that's pretty much par for the course. Most of us were 19, 20, 21 years old when we got to Vietnam. This is one of the few cookouts we managed to have while we were there. Uh, I'm going to have Bob, I just want to point out a couple things. Uh, thanks, Bob. And this is me in the foreground. Uh, our 10 foot high wall that I mentioned uh, between the windows, uh, the bob wire running on the top for a little protection. But I want to point out this gentleman right here. Uh, for as young as we all were, uh, he was one of the most informed, uh, intelligent people uh, that knew about the history of Vietnam and the Vietnam War that I've ever met. Uh, he was just a joy to listen to while I was there. About five months in, we uh, loaded everything up and moved from seven miles south of Saigon to about 50 miles north of Saigon. Uh, this is one shot uh, of me. Here's one of the last shots I have of me uh, during my stay there. So my job as the brigade SOI person, SOI was the signal operating instructions. I assigned and distributed the radio frequencies, call words, and secret crypto codes each month to our, our brigade's infantry units. Sometimes I had to hand deliver some of that information. So one of my highlights of my tour was getting to ride in one of the Huey helicopters a couple of times as a courier out to our infantry outpost. Uh, Yes, there there was a degree of apprehension. <laughs> I, I can't lie about that, but but it was it, it did leave quite a memory. Okay, I think that's a good stopping point. And I guess the, the question is, Craig, was there was there any art related? <laughs> was there anything art related to that now military experience you just shared? Uh, no, <laughs> there wasn't. Uh, not that the I have any memories of doing any art uh, during that first half of my military experience, but it does serve as a precursor to the second half of my military experience, and in particular, a painting that I created during that time. You could probably say that this painting provided the first insight into me becoming an artist and a glimpse of my style in its infancy, and that will all be uh, seen in next episode. Uh, this episode, we saw painting number 14 of the 48. Next episode, number 15. Next episode will be the, uh, I'm, I assure you, next episode will be getting the worksheet transferred to the uh, canvas and then some painting. So you can see what I'm doing with that particular painting. Uh, musical guest is uh, Charles Rowe for the ending credits. And with that, uh, take care, wonderful people, and I'll see you next time. Bye.